Okay, okay, uh, let me just look back at Shelly real quick. <laughs> Thank you. 
Good evening. Good Welcome everyone to the Unitarian Universalist Church of Spokane and to our annual Cosmic Advent. And Shelly, I'm going to get you to turn this my mic down just a little bit. Welcome to our annual Cosmic Advent service. Uh, and welcome to those who are streaming with us. I know there's a lot of you out there today, too, because of the, the, the weather. But thanks to all of you who, who braved the roads and the snow and the cold. It's great to have so many in the room with us as well. Uh, let me, I want to start just by telling you a little bit about this service, uh, how it got started and, and how it differs from other Advent services. Uh, I created this service many years ago when I was still in Louisville. I can't remember how long, how, how many times we did it there, but there was a tradition at our Unitarian Church that our, our uh, music director and her husband started, who were former Catholics, and they, they missed the Advent for the holidays. And uh, it wasn't necessarily something that you would think Unitarians would be interested in having in their church, a, a traditional Catholic Advent service. But Mark was a wonderful classical guitarist, and uh, it was a very quaint, small group of people that would come, and it, it turned out to be a really nice tradition. And when Mark and Janet moved away, we wanted to continue that tradition, but uh, I, I uh, am not an ex-Catholic, and so I did not want to do a, a, a Catholic Advent, and so I created the Cosmic Advent. And it diff differs from the uh, more traditional Advent service in that we are celebrating not the, the advent of the birth of one child, but the advent of the birth of all children and the advent of the birth of life itself. This is a, a cosmic advent. It's the advent toward creation and towards all that is created. Uh, and, and so we will actually sing some of the traditional Advent songs as are included in our Unitarian Universalist hymnal, but we will be singing them within this context, which they sort of transform their meaning a little bit. We're also going to have uh, non-traditional readings from a variety of, of sources uh, around the world, a variety of traditions uh, throughout time and around the world. So it's a, it's a somewhat different service and also lots of, uh, lots of wonderful music from lots of very talented people that are here today as well. So I hope that you enjoy this service as much as I have over the years. And we want to begin moving through our first step in the Advent, through the darkness and silence. And you're welcome to follow along uh, with the order of service as printed in your, uh, in your order of service. So there you go. So I'll begin by noting that as precious as a gift as sight and sound are to all of us, those senses that help us put our world into some sort of rational order, all of us, like the universe itself, began in darkness and silence. That's where we begin. And if, as so many religions instruct, it is necessary to return now and again to our source, then it is not to our sense of order that we must return, but it is to the chaos of darkness and silence. The ancient Egyptians deified this darkness and silence as the goddess Nun, or Nu, similar to the Babylonian goddess Tiamat, a sea monster, a gigantic whirlpool, ready to swallow everything up. Even light itself cannot escape this voracious black hole, the womb of creation. The word chaos itself comes from the Greeks and refers to the original state of existence from which all creation sprang. That's what chaos means. It literally means empty space. But as physicists are now telling us, empty space, chaos, is really not as empty as it appears. We now know that the universe is comprised mostly of dark matter and dark energy, and at the core of every galaxy exists a gigantic black hole, including ours, too dense for stars or even for their light to escape. This is the heart of every galaxy, darkness and silence. 
And even if we could manage to create true emptiness, void even of all subatomic particles, even invisible particles of light, cosmologist Brian Swim tells us that something incredible happens. Even when there are no atoms and no elementary particles and no protons and no photons, suddenly elementary particles will emerge out of nothing, ex nihilo. In short, he says, being itself arises out of a field of fecund emptiness. So today's physicists sound a lot like yesterday's mystics. Mystics like Meister Eckhart who asked, what does God do all day long? God gives birth. It is this homage to the creative power of the dark that the mystics like St. John of the Cross are able to write inspirational poems like his Dark Night of the Soul while suffering in prison and that led to the contemplative life in Western religion through which monks and nuns live cloistered lives in complete silence and to the practice of meditation in the East through which practitioners learned that sometimes the best way to get things done is by sitting still and keeping quiet. It is as Master Morihi Uishiba, the founder of Aikido, the Way of Harmony, instructed his students, return to that source and leave behind all self-centered thoughts, petty desires, and anger. Those who are possessed by nothing possess everything. So we light our first cosmic candle to honor the darkness and quiet from which all things and all beings are born. And how wonderful to have, how wonderful to have the noise of a young one with us on a night like this, reminding us of these things. I'm going to invite you uh, to join me in our first responsive reading of the night. And, and this is uh, actually a collection of sayings from different traditions. Uh, and so the words are printed in your order of service. And I will read those uh, that are italicized and ask you as our congregants to uh, respond by those, with those that are not. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was formless, and darkness covered the face of the deep. O night, O God, O night, O light and dawn, O night that joined lover with beloved, beloved and lover transformed. Yet mystery and manifestations arise from the same source. This source is called darkness, darkness within darkness, the gateway to all understanding. One method, one path into spiritual depth is to let go of our images, even our most cherished ones, including all video images and audio images, and to be sinking into silence. So God bless the seventh day and hour, because God rested from all the work that had been done in creation. Let us have just a moment of silence. Please rise as you're willing and able to sing Silent Night.
Thank you, Larissa. You're amazing. Maura, thank you. You're amazing, too. Great combination. I'm going to ask you to turn with me to responsive reading number 520 out of the gray hymnal. Should be one in front of you somewhere. The gray hymnal number 520. And uh, if you, uh, I, I don't think everyone has the words to these who's streaming with us. Uh, I know they were available, but you may not get them. Deb. Do you mind reading from the microphone the, the part that the congregation will read? Okay. I'm sort of throwing that, that on you here at the last minute, but I was just thinking it might be helpful for folks at home to be able to read, or to hear at least, this reading, number 520. Oh. 
520? 520, yep. And so again, I will uh, begin and ask the congregation to be our respondents. Number 520. O oh, our mother the earth, O oh, our father the sky. Your children are we, and with tired backs we bring you the gifts you love. Then we for us a garment of brightness. May the warp be the white light of morning. May the weft be the red light of evening. May the fringes be the falling rain. May the border be the standing rainbow. Thus we for us a garment of brightness. That we may walk fittingly where birds sing. That we may walk fittingly where grass is green. O oh, our Mother Earth, our Father the sky. Thank you, Deb. Though we must remember the mystery from which all creation springs, the nature of the phenomenal world is light. All beings come from the stars and must continue to nourish themselves with light in some form. The food we consume is photonic energy that has been stored in the plants and other creatures that we eat. It was Einstein who first realized that matter and energy are the same, that E equals MC squared. And, the energy and that energy comprises our bodies is light. Physicist David Bohm once went so far as to say that all matter is frozen light. Theologian Matthew Fox adds that this is not just true of human flesh, but of all flesh. The oranges we eat and the tea we drink, the grasses and the animals, the birds and the stars are all slow-moving light. Matter is light. It is very special light. The Jewish mystical text, the Zohar, means radiance, and it calls God's glory Shekinah, meaning brightness. And when we speak of spiritual awareness here in the West, we sometimes use the word enlightenment, or even refer to those who are unusually smart as bright and brilliant. So at this time of year, especially when we contemplate the birth of a unique child under the light of a special star, we should recall that every child, indeed, every creature, every birth, is the birth of a radiant being, a light of the world. And so we light our second Advent candle as a symbol of birth and light. The Universal Mother, the mother of our songs, the mother of all our seed, bore us in the beginning of things, and so she is the mother of all types of people, the mother of all nations. She is the mother of the thunder, the mother of the streams, the mother of the trees and all things. She is the mother of the worlds and of the older brother, the stone people. She is the mother of the fruits of the earth and of all things. She is the mother of our youngest brothers and the strangers. She is the mother of our dance paraphernalia, of all our temples, and she is the only mother we possess. She alone is the mother of the fire and the sun and the Milky Way. She is the mother of the rain and the only mother we possess. And she has left us a token in all temples, a token in the form of songs and dances. She has no cult and no prayers are really directed to her. But when the fields are sown and the priests chant their incantations, the people say, and then we think of the one and only mother of the growing things, of the mother of all things. One prayer was recorded. Our mother of the growing fields, our mother of the streams, will you have pity upon us? To our mother alone do we belong. Please rise to sing O Come, O Come, Emmanuel.
great mystery, whose name cannot be named, dwell among us and move within us to create heaven here on earth. Give us just enough for today and go easy on us and help us go easy on others. Keep us out of harm's way and away from bad company. Amen. We have one more responsive reading, uh, number 532, before our musical interlude. Number 532. Thank you, Deb. 532. And again, I will begin and ask our congregation to be our respondents. The music of the spheres. A harmonious universe, like a harp. Its rhythms are the equal repeated seasons, the beating of the heart. Day, night, the going and returning of migratory birds. The cycles of stars and corn. The mimosa that unfolds by day and folds up again by night. Rhythms of moon and tide, one single rhythm in planets, atoms, sea. And apples that ripen and fall, and in the mind of Newton. Melody, accord, arpeggios, the harp of the universe, unity behind apparent multiplicity. That is the music. Thank you all so much. <coughs> Truly enlightened beings know that life is a rare and precious gift and strive to receive this gift with celebration and with thanksgiving. It seems so odd then that many in the world use religion as an excuse to 
squander this brief gift that each of us has for such a short lifetime. In the West, too many of us succumb to that fall redemption theology that says ours is a fallen world and that every being is corrupted by sin. And many others misinterpret Eastern thought to mean that we ought to emotionally detach from the world and assume that everything in this life is but an illusion. Certainly there is much beyond this life and much in this life that we will never comprehend, but this season reminds us to celebrate the incarnation of being, the embodiment of being, the manifestation of light into flesh. The cry of the infant in the manger reflects the cry of the realist who strives to take advantage of the here and the now, the only moment that any of us can be sure of. As Thomas Aquinas once said, religion is supreme thankfulness and gratitude, and every ingratitude is a sin. The word religion means to rejoin and to reconnect. It is not about separating ourselves from the world, but fully entering into it and embracing it. Stepping into it, into our bodies, inhabiting it fully, living the one life that is ours. It means embracing the first law of creation. The first law of creation. It is good. It is good. It is good. And so we light our third Advent candle with celebration and gratitude. And we are now going to have a naming of the joys ritual. And uh, I'm going to ask uh, Shane and Dan to come forward. They're going to uh, help, help you light votives, those who would like to. But uh, this is just a ritual where you can come forward if you'd like. Light a candle, a tea light, set it back down and uh, speak into the microphone what your joy is. And I'm actually going to uh, turn those microphones on before you do that, <laughs> and then I'll I'll model what this uh, what this might might look like. How's this sound? Test, 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 good. Okay, well, I am uh, a little taller. <laughs> I would like to say that I'm particularly grateful to Deb Jackson for putting together such a wonderful musical program for this evening. Uh, I'm grateful to all of the singers and musicians who have come to help uh, make this cosmic advent even more special than usual. So thank you so much for all of that. And uh, thanks to uh, Stephanie and Shane Dromos for uh, being our readers tonight. And uh, Stephanie for being our, our candle lighter, our advent lighter. And Dan for stepping in as well and helping us with the candle. So if you would do me the honor. family and friends.
Winter games and the time to play them. Being able to work from home so I can work from my mom's place. <laughs> Having a family. And I've been about with me. <laughs> and vaccines that have allowed us to gather again. Having Ben Yusuf's mom, the light of my life. The joy of dancing. <laughs> I'm so grateful that I can once again lead a choral group in song. <laughs> Very fun. I'm grateful for comedy and humor and the ability to laugh. It seems like such a useless thing that only exists so that we can have more joy in our life, but I love to laugh and I love comedy. I want to thank all of those who were part of the Souls program. Can I light a candle from here? Great. I'm thankful for all of the children that are part of our congregation. All right. Now a poem by Rumi. Give yourself a kiss. If you live in China, don't look somewhere else, in Tibet or Mongolia. If you want to hold the beautiful one, hold yourself to yourself. When you kiss the beloved, touch your own lips with your own fingers. The beauty of every woman and every man is your own beauty. The confusion of your hair obscures that sometimes. An artist comes to paint you and stands with his mouth open. Your love reveals your beauty, but all covering would disappear if only for a moment your holding back would sit before your generosity and ask, Sir, who are you? At that, the lover's life-changing face gives you a wink. Please stand as you're willing and able to sing Joy to the World.
I invite you now to uh, recite the prayer as printed in your order of service in unison with me. I hope it's printed in your, there it is. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. O Divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console. To understand is to understa be understood. Sorry, you got it. <laughs> to be loved is to love. For it is in giving that we receive. It is in pardoning that we are pardoned. And it is in dying that we are born to eternal life.
Thank you so much. Truly living life in the here and now is never a selfish act. The law of the universe is attraction. Again, as cosmologist Brian Swim explains, at this cosmic level, the basic dynamism of the universe is the attraction each galaxy has for every other galaxy. Nothing in all of science has been established and studied with greater attention and detail than this primary attraction of each part of the universe for every other part. We might also accurately call this attraction the universe has for itself passion. At its deepest and most basic level, the universe is comprised of the sort of irrepressible, passionate love that Rumi refers to when he says, give yourself a kiss. If you want to hold the beautiful one, hold yourself to yourself. Swim, referring to this passion as allurement, insists that if we are going to think about love in its cosmic dimension, we must start with the universe as a whole. We must begin with the attraction that permeates the entire macrostructure. I'm speaking precisely of the basic binding energy, energy found everywhere in reality. And once again, we see that science and religion are now meeting. Science is in agreement with Jesus who taught us that God is love. Likewise, it is not enough for us to simply live our lives if we are not incarnating love incarnating the allurement and the attraction that is everywhere in the universe. And so we light our fourth Advent candle in honor of wisdom and of love. The Lord created me at the beginning of his work the first of his acts long ago. Ages ago I was set up at the first, before the beginning of the earth. When there were no depths, I was brought forth, when there were no springs abounding with water. Before the mountains had been shaped, before the hills, I was brought forth, when he had not yet made earth and fields or the world's first bits of soil. When he established the heavens, I was there, when he drew a circle on the face of the deep, when he made firm the skies above, when he established the fountains of the deep, when he assigned to the sea its limit, so that the waters might not transgress his command. When he marked out the foundations of the earth, then I was beside him like a master worker, and I was daily his delight, rejoicing before him always, rejoicing in his inhabited world, and delighting in the human race. rise to sing We Three Kings.
poem was written by Maddie Stefanek, who died in 2004 when he was only 13 from a rare form of muscular dystrophy. During his short life, he became a best-selling poet, a peace activist, and a motivational speaker. His hero and friend, President Jimmy Carter, called him the most extraordinary person I've ever known. Pinch of Peace. Dear God, tonight my prayers are for the world. We have to stop this fighting. We have to stop the wars. People need to lay down their weapons and find peace in their hearts. People need to stop arguing and hating. People need to notice the good things. People need to remember you, God. Maybe you could come and shoot a little bow and arrow pinch into all the angry people's hearts, God. Then they would feel you again, and they would realize what they are doing, and how horrible the killing and hating and fighting is, and they might even begin to pray. Then they could reach in and pull the little bow and arrow pinch out of their hearts and feel good, and be loving and living people again. And then, the world would be at peace, and the children would be safe, and the people would be happy, and we could all say thank you together. Amen.
think I need to light another one of those candles and double up on my gratitude for the wonderful music. So it would have been worth coming tonight just to hear the music. So finally, as we contemplate the darkness and silence from which we come, the light and radiance through which we live, the celebration and gratitude incarnating the love that is our true nature and the nature of our universe, it must not be forgotten that love is a verb, not a noun. Love must be lived out in the way that it is best expressed is through justice and compassion. Where there is no justice, there is no love. For as Meister Eckhart understood, compassion means justice. Matthew Fox proclaims, the prophet interferes with the injustice, the unnecessary pain the, that reigns on the earth and its creatures when humans neglect justice and compassion. Justice and compassion, again, are one and the same. Justice is love lived out. The prophet Fox goes on to say, is but a mystic in action. So the advent toward life is a march toward justice. Injustice, depicted as a blind goddess holding scales by the ancient Greeks, reflects the harmonious balance that sustains the entire universe. Thus, it is justice, the incarnation of love, that is both the alpha and the omega of our faith. It is the beginning and the end of our cosmic advent. So we light our cosmic candle in the name of transformation and wholeness, in the name of equality and justice for all. If you will read with me in unison, the words as printed in your program. When we leave Mass, we ought to go out the way Moses descended Mount Sinai, with his face shining, with his heart brave and strong, to face the world's difficulties. Please stand to sing Angels We Have Heard on High.
Thank you all so much for coming tonight. I hope you understand that this Advent was as much about you as anything else because it's an Advent celebration of everything, including those of you as individuals. Meister Eckhart said that every creature is a word of God and a book about God, including you. This is a celebration of you as an individual who is a light of the world. Happy Christmas. Thanks for coming.